Hi everyone, Tony here for Immortality. Organoid Intelligence, OI, not AI. A field of artificial intelligence and biotech that uses real brain tissue, neurons, rather than a silicon analog. Obviously, this is not preferable to silicon due to the complexity. Inversely, neurons already have the capacity for intelligence. Rather, it is the humans that are struggling to understand the neuron. Final Spark submits Neuro Platform, a complete system for organoid intelligence. It is enticing in that it's primitive, but is probably the most advanced version submitted to date. A well-resourced group could double the features of the system fairly easily. They would probably use the recently released paper from Final Spark as a guide or specification. Neuro platform comprising of the life support system, they get 100 days of lifespan from a single neuron, which they have worked up from a few days lifespan some time ago. The increase in lifespan of the neuron is due to, they claim, the better life support system. A goal of 365 days would outdo neuro platform. Final Spark's organoid size is 500 micrometers, the size of a human hair, and they are impressively and nicely designed spheroids. 3D objects that look like a ball, sitting on electrodes like a droplet with medium passing under and forming a surface tension cover over the top of the organoid. The size of the organoid is crucial to its ability and doubling the size of the organoid, like some kind of Moore's law, could be achieved. As the organoid does not have vasculature, the size is limited with necrosis occurring in places where the organoid is starved of media. Larger organoids, doubling the size of the organoids, means entirely reworking the organoid so that necrosis does not occur. Vascularized tissue organoids described in this paper a microfluidic platform integrating functional vascularized organoids on chip. Keyword organoid vascularization, microvascular network system, endothelium rich spheroids, and vascular organoids, as they successfully provide intravascular perfusion to these structures, should these be tissue or artificial, for instance, a scaffold. Whether these systems mimic natural environments, habitats, and more so, can they perform plasticity and restructure? as they would do in the brain. Thirdly, we are all stumped at the communication, the language. Two systems, there is no language and training is required. The organoid learns the language that the operator trains the organoid. Secondly, the organoid is performing a language that no one understands. For instance, a baby does not learn to see a new. The new rods that provide sight are pre-configured in some way. Food in a form of dopamine is utilized with neuro platform for reinforcement learning. Two methods find the binary switch such that every time an identical specific stimulation is issued, the response is the same. Then we can build a binary computer from a switch. Do real brains offer some clues? Is there an identical waveform to stimulation? Do we flash light at candidates and record their brain patterns and then try and locate the pattern in the organoid? Everyone thinks AI has a role in working out what the electrical output of neurons mean. Neurons are constantly producing analog electrical activity. Neuro platform is modular, using an array of organoids, essentially doubling the amount of organoids. Neuro platform uses Python code to issue commands to the organoids and signal processing computer equipment. The platform can be accessed globally and anyone can run experiments using remote desktop and Python code to control stimulation and record response. 
They are producing vast amounts of data constantly and they collect and store all the data the organoids produce in a time series database. Final Spark submits Neuro Platform as a complete and comprehensive organoid intelligence platform with a view to scale Neuro Platform in subsequent versions, perhaps Neuro Platform 2. A competing platform with double the capacity and sophistication could easily be built, but not without looking at Neuro Platform for inspiration and not without coming up with new ways to tackle challenges. Other networks are the Cortical Lab demonstration, which they recently received 15 million to scale up. Biological computer. Now, how this works is a drop of blood is taken and transformed into stem cells, which are then transformed into neurons. So the neurons are placed inside here. This element is effectively the beating heart. You've got some filtration happening here, which is like the kidneys, and this bit is effectively the lungs. Some colleges have elaborate OI programs which have been going on for 40 years. Organoid intelligence needs development. The goal is to build a comparable artificial intelligence system like ChatGPT using real neurons. Okay, guys, go beat Neuro Platform. Other scientists use a completely different approach. They take the brain cells apart and let them grow in a small dish on top of a computer chip. The problem with this technique is that it is extremely difficult to place each cell exactly on the right connection point. A team of researchers at IMEC has recently found the trick. They printed a pattern on the chip with a product that the brain cells love to eat. While consuming the product, the cells get stuck to the right spot and their tentacles are guided by the pattern. This way, the whole network of brain cells can be entirely controlled. Some scientists have already been experimenting with such brain dishes. Their chips were less precise, but their results sometimes remarkable. Let me disconnect the light show. Dr. DeMars, for instance, tries to communicate with his brain dishes and teach them several tasks. So each of these dishes contains about 20,000 or so neurons, which are firing away as we speak. So each one's an individual network, and they'll fire spontaneously. We take living rat neurons, and they will rapidly form a neural network and we have this grid of electrodes underneath the surface of these living neurons, and we can listen to the conversation among the neurons. And we can also stimulate activity within that network. We can send in different patterns of stimulation and look at how the network changes as a result of, of those stimulations. And that's how we do what we do. What he does is to teach his brain dishes how to control an airplane. The network can essentially fly the aircraft in a pretty optimal way. So it won't overcorrect too much, and it'll be able to stabilize it in a wide variety of conditions. I think I've programmed like a 50-knot crosswind into this one. That was what it looks like. You can see it, the aircraft, when it hits one of these crosswinds, how it begins to oscillate. The oldest dish that I've had is at two years. And the only reason why that, that dish um, died was because uh, we were moving the lab from Caltech to Georgia Tech. Otherwise, that dish would probably still be alive today. Each dish has a characteristic, so you can learn to recognize one dish from another dish. They're demanding, though. You have to feed them once a week and 